All right, guys, let's check this out. We got a new load of scooter batteries. Let's check it out. All right, this load is about 25,000 pounds of scooter batteries. And these are uh, like the R5s. These are the R5 batteries we have on our website right now selling 40 cells. They're Panasonic 3200, the, the 18650 BDs. So these are really good cells, almost like, you know, almost the same thing that is in a Tesla, for example. So these are Tesla quality 18650s. And we have a bunch of 25,000 pounds of this stuff. And then the new one that we had some of these already, but we hadn't list them and we just listed them. These are the R5 shorties. And these are 40 cells, but these are LG uh, 18650MH1s, right? So also 3,200 milliamp hours, but they're slightly bigger uh, capacity here. According to this thing, it says that they are 12.8 milliamp hours, right? Or 12.8 amp hours, uh, 36 volts. So 430, uh, 473 watt hours, where these ones are rated at... 460 watt hours well that's so weird 12.8 amp hours 12.8 amp hours but yet this one is rated at 473 and this is at 460 how where are the rest where are the extra 10 watt hours come out maybe what happens is that the bms shuts off a little lower in the voltage range and so that's why you can get an extra 10 watt hours off of these as opposed to these, right? Right. But those are just kind of rough numbers. Um, those, uh, we also have, uh, we've got another pallet of these 30 cells. These are the 30 cells, 2,600 milliamp hours. Yeah, these are pretty popular. You guys are buying a bunch of them. So as you can see, this is close to, I did the math and this is close to two megawatt hours of batteries here. It's pretty crazy. No, 2,200, so 3,200. Yeah, like 3,500 packs or something like that. 35, 3,600 packs, battery packs. And so they're gonna be on our website, Jack35. Uh, I I'm, I do wanna look at this one closer. Let's take it onto the bench and see uh, the cells that are in there and see what it takes to get one of these working because I haven't made a video on that kind. All right, so here I is on the bench. It's got the model number. You can see it right there. And the size wise, it's about 13 inches wide. I mean, long, right? By about four wide, by about three tall. So they're a bit taller than the other ones that we have in stock. But uh, let's take one of these apart and Here's what the inside looks like. It's got the BMS board on top like this. It's got six MOSFETs um, and it's got 40 cells uh, and they're stacked three, three tall, right? And they're obviously the MH1s. Now here's the thing. They come with this connector, which is proprietary and i think we can find it i just we haven't found it yet it's just like the other ones where it had the two power connect connectors there the pins and then the three signal uh cables right there uh it also has a secondary connector which is the charging connector so you can charge it through these through this small connector and then it'll balance the whole battery and i think through here it can do region charging but it doesn't it's not designed to run to to balance the thing at the very top right so you can charge it faster here i think the, it's a five amp max charging through this small charging connector but i think on this one uh inside it has a 30 amp B, uh, fuse and so I think this BMS is rated around 25 amp continuous amps, right? So you can discharge it at 25 amps and you could also charge it uh, at 25 amps, right? So you could charge it through here. And then it's got this other connector in here that we don't know what it is for, but it's, it's capped. Most, most of these have this extra little cap, which means meant that they didn't use it in the application that these come from. And I think these are from bird scooters, I believe. Now, I don't know exactly which model of the scooters they come from. 
because we haven't done the research to find out yet, but it doesn't really matter for us because we're just gonna use them for other stuff, right? And what are these good for? Well, these are good for e-bikes because they can do 25 amps, right? And they're small, right? They're a little bit fatter, but they're smaller, so they can fit them in more places on an e-bike. You can make a scooter, you can uh, pair a couple of these and put them in parallel, and then you can run like a smaller, like a bigger, maybe power, like, e-bike or something you could put two of these in series and then you can have uh 72 volts right at 25 amps now that's, that's starting to get serious right but in order to do all of those things you will have to what i do what i recommend is to change the the plug because uh maybe in the future we will find it but as of now we don't know this plug right and we don't have it we don't know where to buy it so what i have done here is just change this to an XT60, right? I just got a little pigtail here, and then uh, it's not that much work, but it is work, you gotta do it. Um, as far as all the other stuff, here are the other lines. There's uh, four of them, even though the pin only has three pins in here. You, I, They're mostly, I think, for state of charge. You don't actually need a security code, a digital security code to be able to turn this on, and I'll show you that right now. All right, so as you can see here, the one that we've taken apart, I've pretty much cut all the wires here. Uh, here are the charging port, smaller cables, and then I just connected the pigtail to that, right? So there's nothing else there. And when you put this uh, meter here, then it just turns on and it shows 38.99 because that's the upper range of this one, but it's like 42 volts, right? Completely fully charged it. And so if you wanted to use these batteries, yeah, you'd have to just put, uh, you know, a parallel thing, right? More than one, you just parallel them or you put them in series and then you can run 72 volts in here. So let's do a small uh, example of how we can use these. All right, here's our setup. Uh, we have a grid tie inverter, right? These are the inverters that are made for solar panels, but also for batteries. This one uh, also can accept a battery on the input, right? And so that's what we're gonna do. We have our battery connected here, and then here I have it connected to one of these DC power strips that we sell on our website. This is so that you can connect multiple of these, right? Uh, this is a small battery. It's like about less than half a kilowatt hour of battery, right? But now uh, two, now that's closer to one kilowatt, right? And so you can add a bunch of these batteries. In order to connect them together, you can use some of these and then just connect them together here like that. That's Now that's two batteries are powering this thing. This is just a meter, right? A measuring current device. And then this is gonna show it right here. And we're gonna plug that in there and then see how, how, you know, how hard we can push that one and see how well it does. So which one should we do? Let's do the one that is not protected. So it's just in case if we see, if we blow the uh, fuse there, right? Cause this thing can pull like 30 amps. So it's pulling eight. 10 amps, Let's see if it'll do 30 amps. Oh, there we go. Oh, so I think the the BMS, yeah, so the BMS stepped in. Okay, to rewake the battery, to wake up the battery, what I've done is I've connected a uh, power supply right in the uh, bus here. And it's gonna put 40 volts back in here. So hopefully that's gonna wake up the battery. And then from there we can run the test again, right? So let's plug it in. There we go, 41. Now it shows 41 there. Now let's see if it stays there. Yep, sure enough, it's staying on, so. See if it starts. There we go. 10 amps, 25 amps, 26, 27 amps. Oh, I think it triggered it again. Okay, I just increased it. Cause I think this battery can do 25 amps. Go. 
go. 23. Okay, let's see if we can get to twenty-four point six amps. Ah, there we go, and it cut down. So it's around twenty-three amps, maybe. I think that's where we're at. All right, here we go. Let's see our twenty-three. So 23.7 amps and it's uh, holding. All right, another test I wanna run is to see when it will shut down. Right now, I'm charging it at 10 amps and it's at 42.5, right? So let's see at what point it will uh, disconnect. So as our little test there demonstrated, these have low voltage cutoff on the discharge cables, but they do not have a high voltage cutoff. So you're gonna charge them and if you can't control the voltage well, on, your charge, uh, on your charging side, then I don't, I'd suggest you use the charging, the smaller charging connector and not the, uh, the discharge and not charge them through the discharge cables because you will you know you will get into problems right we just our test here showed that the the cells got all the way up to 4.5 volts and the bms did not cut off so they do not have cut off there all right so these are our uh, our five shorties that's what we're calling them on our website jack35.com uh to summarize our little test here they can put out about 23 amps continuous right but uh if you are pulling like ma the max power out you'd only be able to use about 30 percent of the capacity after that the bms will shut down the the battery will sag and then shut down if you want to get the full 470 uh watt hours off of this pack then you'll have to do that at a lower rate right somewhere around 10 amps or something like that um also if you want to charge uh, you can do it through the uh, discharge port here and you can do it faster. You can do up to 20 amps charging, right? If you want it fast charge, but you got to keep in mind that it, they don't have a high voltage cutoff. They only have a low voltage cutoff on this plug. If you want a high voltage cutoff, right? Because you can't control your charger, then you must use the charging port, which are, uh, will limit you to about five amps charging. So there you go. These are the R5s. They're very compelling. They're super cool. They were super light and compact packs. So much that I'm gonna actually use them on uh, DIY cars, so my fleet of BW buses, right? Uh, because we have enough of these and I'm gonna keep some for myself. So these are some of the best batteries that we've gotten uh, if you can work within the uh, specs and so the limitations that they have, then these are great. So thank you for watching this video. We'll see you guys on the next one. Oh, by the way, before I go, uh, we have some of these batteries uh, in Canada. There's a lot of these in Canada and we're going to auction them off and they're going to auction in lots of 30 packs, right? And uh, no reserve. So you can get them for $3 or you can get it for $10. You, or you can get, you know, I don't know. Well, I don't know how high they're gonna go, but uh, here's a good chance 
of you, someone like you that is looking for some of these uh, to be able to get them at a very cheap price, right? Uh, depending on just how many people show up to the thing. The auctions is ongoing right now and it's gonna end on the 27th. So you'd have to go to premierauctions.com and then you have to uh, register your name there so you can start bidding and then put all your info and stuff. And then uh, you can just follow the link. I'll put a link on the bottom of the description. Otherwise, if you are in States and you want to get some of these, well, you can go to jack35.com and then we have these there, uh, as well as uh, a full assortment of these uh, scooter packs, right? The 20 cells, the 30 cells, these 40 cells, the R5s, and then the uh, all the other ones, right? So there you go. Thanks for watching this video. We'll see you guys on the next one. Stay busy making DIY projects as always. Bye.